Hi, welcome to my Adobe Tips and Tricks channel on YouTube. I'm Mike Snodgrass, Adobe Certified Instructor. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to utilize spot colors in Photoshop CC. Unlike other programs from Adobe, like InDesign or Illustrator, where spot colors are handled easily, Photoshop requires a few extra steps in order to print with spot inks. So in this example, we're going to work with this mocked up advertisement for a tooth whitening system that you can see to my left. And we're going to take the blue background rectangle at the bottom of the poster and assign that a spot blue that matches the, uh, the client's corporate color scheme. And I'll walk you through all the steps necessary to get from layout to a five color print job using our spot ink. So let's take a look. And as always, if you're interested in training for yourself or your company, just visit my website at msnod.com, M-S-N-O-D.com, and you can find information on how to contact me, and I'll be happy to, to work with you. All right, let's take a look. So the first thing I need to do is select the rectangle so I can fill it with a new color. A great trick in Photoshop to select all the visible elements on any given layer is to right click on the thumbnail for that layer within the layers panel. So I will right click on the thumbnail for the rectangle layer and choose select pixels. Great, so the whole rectangle is selected. Now I'm going to go to Edit and choose Fill. In the Fill dialog box, I'm going to choose to fill with a color. To get to the library of color books for the Pantone colors, I'll just click Color Libraries. And then from the drop down list of books, find the appropriate book. So we're going to use Pantone Solid Coated. Now I simply need to type in the number that I want. And you'll notice there is nowhere here really to type the number in. If you just type it quickly enough, it'll be accepted. So if I typed in 1050, then, well, there is no Pantone Solid Coated 1050, so I get 105. What we're looking for is solid coded 540. So I'll type 540 and it's selected for me. And I want you to note this little triangular warning appears. This warning indicates that the selected color is not CMYK safe. So if I try to print this on a standard four color process printer, I'm not going to get a perfect match of this blue. It'll shift into the closest printable color. So that's okay. That just means we're going to have to use a spot channel, which was the whole purpose of this lesson anyway. So I'll click OK and OK. And excellent. Our rectangle is now using the client's corporate blue. So I'm going to deselect the rectangle. I'll go to select, deselect. And before I go about creating my spot color channel, I want you to note a couple of things. There's a slight drop shadow on the top edge of this rectangle. I want to preserve that. Since that drop shadow is a layer style applied to the rectangular layer, that won't survive when I go to use the spot color. Since spot colors print as channels and not as layer content, I'm actually going to hide this layer once the spot channel has been created. If I hide the layer, I lose the effect. So I'm going to go over to my layers panel and I'm going to right click on my drop shadow layer style. 
and from the pop-up menu, I'm going to choose Create Layer. I'll get a message telling me you might lose some aspects of this, but actually with a drop shadow, this should be fine. So I'll hit OK. And you'll now notice there's no longer a layer style on the rectangle layer. Instead, there's a new layer below it, Rectangles Drop Shadow. If I were to solo that layer by holding down the Alt or Option button on my keyboard and clicking the Visibility Eyeball, you'll see it's just our entire Drop Shadow isolated on its own layer. I will Alt or Option click the same eye again. And now that we've preserved our shadow, I'm going to select and copy the blue rectangle so that I can reuse that with my spot channel. So at this point, you might be thinking, well, we just filled the rectangle with a spot color. If we go to print, we should get that color. And that's not exactly how Photoshop's going to function. By default, Photoshop's going to distribute all your colors over whatever channels are available in that color mode. So if it's an RGB image, it's going to take all your colors and distribute those over red, green, and blue. And in this case, it's a CMYK uh, image. So we're going to have channels for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So the blue we've created from the spot color actually will come out as a CMYK color and not be completely accurate. Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go to the Channels panel. Now I have my Channels panel docked in a tab right here next to my Layers panel. If you don't see it there on yours, just go to Window and choose Channels. All right, so in my Channels, if I were to click on the Cyan channel, it goes to grayscale. All channels are in 8-bit uh, grayscale. You'll see our rectangle is visible. And if I click on magenta, you'll see it's there, yellow, black. So I will go back and select my main CMYK composite channel again. So we're going to need to create a specific spot channel to handle that ink and remove this rectangle from the CMYK channels in order to get our desired result. I'm going to go back to the Layers panel and I'm going to right click on the thumbnail for the rectangle layer and choose Select Pixels. So again, the rectangle is selected and this time I'm going to copy it. Edit, Copy. And then I'll go ahead and deselect again. Select, deselect. And then I'm going to hide this layer. So I'm going to click the eye visibility next to the rectangle layer and hide that. Go back to my channels panel and I'm going to click the panel menu at the top right of the channels panel here and choose new spot channel. I will then click on the color picker, click color libraries. Excellent. I'll hit OK. I'm going to set the solidity of my spot channel to 100%. Solidity is essentially opacity for this ink. And a solidity of zero, well, I just wouldn't see anything. So I'll put it at 100%. I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Special, Paste in Place. 
and it will paste the information copied from the rectangle layer onto our spot color channel. And it looks, well, okay. We actually have a, two, a couple of uh, specific problems here. The first problem is that the rectangle is no longer fully opaque. Since all channels, including spot channels, are grayscale, any color information that you paste onto them is converted into gray based on the relative lightness of the copied color. So since the blue I copied was sort of a middle blue, when pasted on the channel, it comes in as a middle to darker gray, not black. And you'll see that if I come over here and I hide the CMYK channels, click a little I here, the remaining spot channel has a gray bar on it, not a black bar. So that gray translates into less than 100% usage of that ink. So this isn't going to work for us. Now, there's a couple things I could do to fix this. I could undo everything I've done, change the fill color of that rectangle layer to black, and then repeat the process. Copy, create my new color channel, paste. That would create a black fill here, which would equate to 100% solidity, no transparency. But I could just as easily, while I'm here, since I'm not using any subtle shades of this color, it's going to be solid blue. I'm just going to go to Edit, Fill, and I'm going to fill using black. I'm going to hit OK. I have the exact same end result. So now that the spot channel is using a solid black for the spot color, if I were to make CMYK visible again, not bad. I have the exact color I want and a nice solid fill. So I'm going to deselect, select, deselect. It's usually a pretty good idea once you're done working with spot channels or alpha channels to reselect the main CMYK or RGB composite channel. I'll return to my layers panel and I have a second problem here. I had text and an image of the teeth whitening tray superimposed over the blue rectangle. Well, because this blue rectangle is no longer a layer, it is now a color channel, it's going to effectively be the fifth plate used by the printer, which means it's going to overprint my cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels or plates, covering up the text and a good portion of the whitening tray image. Our solution will be to knock out the shape of the text and the image from the spot channel. That'll put holes in the spot channel, allowing our text and image to show through. So let's select the text. I'm going to right click on the thumbnail for the text layer here and choose Select Pixels. Excellent. Now, because I need to use this in concert with the selection of the image, I'm going to save this so I can get back to it in just a moment. So I'm going to go to Select, Save Selection. And I'll give a quick name. I'll call it text mask, and I'll hit OK. Now I will right click the thumbnail for the whitening tray layer, select pixels, 
So it's selected, but in the process, we lost the selection for the text. So I'll add that by going to Select, Load Selection from my list of available channels. I will choose Text Mask, and I will choose to add that to my existing selection. I'll hit OK. Both are selected. I'll return to the Channels panel. Select my Pantone 540C spot channel. And delete. I will go to Select and Deselect. If I go take a look at the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels, you'll notice if I hide CMYK, if I hide my spot, so I'm only viewing cyan, the rectangle's not there. Magenta, yellow, black, nothing there. But if I make the spot channel visible, there it is. And that is how to use spot inks in Photoshop.